it is hard to believe, even in 2024, that there is a lot of people that are still underserved when it comes to getting good and reliable internet. Now this is where a solution, where T-Mobile 5G home internet comes into play. Now, I will tell you that I have personal hands-on experience with using the T-Mobile home internet after messing around with it for well over the past three years. Due to my recommendations to clients that I do IT work for, as well as personally using the T-Mobile 5G home internet for my needs as well. And I've got a lot to say about how it's changed throughout the years. And we'll be covering if it is still a viable option for today's standards in 2024. Now, my recommendations are going to differ based on the current situation that you are in. On if this is a good solution for you. Because unlike what T-Mobile might advertise, this is not a one-size-fits-all type of internet solution. So generally, people that use the internet fall into one of two categories here. The first is, and the most important, they use it for work and they need it to work. They need it to be reliable. They cannot afford to have it go down or in worst case, it could cost them their job. Something like internet, I cannot take a back seat on because it needs to be reliable. And the second type is people who use the internet just for leisure purposes. You know, if it happens to go down every once in a while or they experience the occasional blip, you know, although inconvenience, it's not the end of the world. I've had the pleasure of both talking to and working with people who have had all sorts of different stories based on their internet experience. The first, satellite internet. If you've had this or you know someone that has had this, maybe you've seen the commercials Honestly, it is worse than they make it out to be. DSL is a little bit better, but still not very adequate for most people for today's standards. Followed by a cable or fiber internet connection. And in all honesty, when it works, it is super reliable. And I've also dealt with people that have fixed wireless internet, which is basically the same thing as the T-Mobile home internet, just with different providers. Internet is brought in based on a cellular connection. So now, why would someone even consider possibly going with a solution like the T-Mobile 5G home internet? In my experience, most cases, it is out of frustration. Their current internet provider goes down all the time. And the second is they're looking for a better option. And the price is very enticing. Now, all of these are, of course, very valid and good reasons. Because after all, pain is a great motivator. And without it, you wouldn't change a thing. So, all right, you want to go ahead and give it a try. Now, I'm going to go into how the service actually works and how good is it. All right, so here we are on the website here. T-Mobile advertises it as reliable 5G home internet that's simple to set up. And that is basically true. You can go from the box to browsing in as little as 15 minutes. $50 a month with auto pay and eligible payment method. Now, what that eligible payment method means is it's either a debit card or a bank account. You can no longer use a credit card. If you do, it will be $55 a month. So something to keep in mind there. Now, if you're already an existing T-Mobile customer, you can go ahead and add the T-Mobile home internet for as little as $30 a month, as long as you're already with T-Mobile here. So most people would go ahead and fill out this form with their address and then click on check availability. But honestly, that is not what I recommend doing. Here is why. What if I told you that instead of waiting that you can get the T-Mobile home internet gateway today? Yes, today. The best thing I would recommend for everyone to do 
is to go into their local T-Mobile store. They will go ahead and get you signed up and you'll be out the door and you'll have it and you'll be ready to go today instead of ordering it online where it'll take probably several weeks, to be honest with you, to receive. Now, if you're anything like me, and I guarantee that the majority of you, if not all of you are, if I can have something today or a couple weeks from now, I would get it today. And another thing, not everyone will be eligible if they fill out this form online and click on check availability. There's a lot of people where it says it's currently not available in your area. But if you go into the T-Mobile store, they will get you signed up. Now, wait a minute. How can they do this? Yes. How can they do this? How can they sign you up in the store even if you're not eligible for it online? This is because the T-Mobile employees will find an eligible address for you to use so you can go ahead and get signed up for the T-Mobile home internet. Don't believe me? Go ahead and give it a try yourself. This is absolutely the case. Now, there are some downfalls to this. When you go and sign up for it online, T-Mobile is certain that your area has the excess capacity. When you go into the store and you have them sign you up based on an eligible address, you might experience slower speeds during certain times, especially at nights or on the weekends. But there are people that have had great success with this because honestly, they didn't have any other valuable option. So now, if you go into the store and you get the T-Mobile Gateway, you take it home and you're like, you know what? Honestly, this just isn't what I thought it was. There is some good news for you. Instead of being out the $50 for the internet service, T-Mobile offers a worry-free 15-day guarantee. So you have 15 days to try it out in your area to see if it's a good fit for you. I also must note something important here so you are not caught off guard. With all of the new T-Mobile activations now, there is a $35 activation fee. You might also have it referred to as a device connection fee. This is just for new signups. And honestly, this was not always the case. Back when John Ledger was CEO, and I honestly have thought very highly of him. He has done great work for T-Mobile. But the same can't be said for me under the new CEO, Mike Sievert. It's his company. He's going to run it the way that he wants to run it but he has introduced the $35 device activation fee, which when John Ledger was CEO, he abolished all these extra fees. So just don't be caught off guard. So now, for those of you who have the T-Mobile Home Internet Gateway and have great success, then congratulations. Because honestly, when it works and it works well, it is a great option for a lot of people, but not for everyone. For those who don't have a great experience, maybe they're experiencing dropouts, slow speeds, etc. They're like, you know what? Honestly, this just is not a good option for me. What can I do next? I do have good news. What I recommend people do is go to this website, broadbandnow.com. Enter your zip code because it's going to give you a list of internet providers that honestly, you might not even be aware that they're in your area. Now, there are some really cool things about this website here. Not only does it give you the prices, it gives you estimated speeds. It tells you what the connection type is and the availability of percentage of people that are in your area. So as we can see, for example, for my area, 
I have Spectrum, Frontier, Viasat, HughesNet. These are all satellite providers here. Frontier in my area is DSL. In certain areas, more populated areas, they have fiber as well. And then in my area, Spectrum is cable. And they also now offer fiber in my area at certain locations. So I have something I need to confess with you guys. So while I still have experience with the T-Mobile 5G home internet because many of my clients that I do IT work for have the service and they love it. For me, it was just not working out. Let me explain why. So I live in a tourist area and a lot of people come up for the holidays. My speeds were getting very unbearable. The last straw for me though was it went out in my area for four whole days. I was like, you know what? It's just not worth it. So here's what I did. I went back to Charter Spectrum. And here's the great news. These prices here are promotional pricing. So because I went back to Spectrum, I was able to get brought back in as a new customer. Yes, because I have disconnected service, I went back to Spectrum and they saw me as a brand new customer in their system. And this is the case with everybody as well. So I was able to get this $49.99 plan right here. And in all honesty, this is one cent cheaper than the T-Mobile home internet. So if you happen to be in my same situation, say you left Spectrum, you went to T-Mobile, you found out in your area, like I did for me, that it just wasn't good and you go back to Spectrum, like I said, you will get brought in as a new customer and get the very best promotional pricing. Now, if you happen to be in a scenario where, you know, you're checking out the T-Mobile home internet and you're like, you know, honestly, what I have with my current provider is working, it's reliable and it works, I just don't like the pricing then here is what you do. You go ahead and you call up your existing provider and you tell them, hey, I've noticed that my bill has gone up recently and I've been looking around my options and, you know, I think I'm going to switch. Can you go ahead and get me a better price? There are a few things that might happen here. The first is they're going to say, oh, yes, we want to get you the very best deal. Let's go ahead and see what we can find. If they give you a great deal, go ahead and go for it. But if they are hesitant to do, which sometimes this is the case, all you got to do is ask to speak to a supervisor. This is going to throw red flags in their head. They might even put you on hold and say, hold on, let me see what I can do. They might come back with an offer for you. Or, last case, if they're extremely stubborn, they will transfer you to a supervisor. They really don't like to do this because a customer service rep's job is to keep you on the phone with that rep. They don't want you being transferred to higher ups. This makes the current rep look bad. So if you have to speak to a supervisor, like I said, just let them know that, hey, I've noticed my bill has gone up recently and I've been looking around different providers for options. What is the best price that you can give me? And they'll probably give you a really good deal. If the last case scenario is they say, you know what, that's tough. Simply, now this is not rude, by the way, even though some people might say it is. Simply, hang up the phone, and try again. Then you will get someone else. Try this process all over again. Do not give up, though. If you're currently happy with your current provider, you just don't like this latest price increase that you have faced. 
That's a very wise move right there. Because if you like something and it works, and you go to something that might not be as reliable or questionable, you know, you'll have some regret set in. But like I said, you can always go back and get a better price also. So now I have to talk about some experiences that I faced going on in further years after using the T-Mobile home internet service. And my clients have reported these things to me. They have noticed that the network is getting even more congested than usual. Here's the thing a lot of people don't know about the T-Mobile home internets. If you're in a place that can handle it, has ultra capacity, you know, can handle the excess traffic, those are the type of people that generally don't have as many issues. But if you are in a more rural area, you will experience major deprioritization at times. So how T-Mobile handles the home internet is the home internet is placed on the lowest network priority. So cell phone users, prepaid users, they get higher priority versus the T-Mobile home internets. So you're going to experience when the network is more congested, you're gonna experience slower speeds. And I'm gonna share with you some screenshots that show this as well, so you can see. Also, I bet you didn't know that these T-Mobile home internet gateways are not locked to a particular tower. So, what does that mean? Many, yes, many people are taking these devices on vacation with them and they're just using it as their internets. Now, in bigger cities, more populated areas where there is ultra capacity, this really isn't a big issue. But in smaller rural areas, this is becoming a problem. Because say the T-Mobile home internet works great for you right now, when there's a lot of people come up for like holidays, if you're in a tourist area like myself, you're going to experience the network slowness. And I've experienced it to the point where it wouldn't even complete a speed test. And that right there is just not acceptable. So now, is the T-Mobile 5G home internet truly worth it in 2024? As you can hear from my experience, my stories, it really is gonna depend on which bucket you are in. So after listening, you're like, you know what? This over here, this scenario fits me best. And you're going to be able to decide, you know what? Do I want to gamble with this? Is what I have good? I just don't like the price. Then I told you how to fix that. If you're generally looking for a better option, then go ahead and give it a try. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at some general speeds that you can receive with the service. So straight from the T-Mobile website, you can typically expect download speeds between 72 and 245. That is when you are in a good connection. T-Mobile then goes on to say, 25% of our customers see speeds below and 25% see speeds above this range. It is delivered via the 5G cellular network as well as the fallback to the 4G LTE. There is no dedicated slots on the cell phone tower for this. Some people think, oh yeah, there's dedicated slots on the cell phone tower. No, it uses the same exact cellular network as the cell phones do. And as you can see, speeds vary due to various affecting cellular networks. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at some screenshots that I've personally taken as well as some that my clients have sent me. So honestly, right now, not too bad. Almost 69 for the download, 64 for the up. Here's another one. Not even eight for the download and for the upload. Really impressed by a lot of these upload speeds, I will say. Here's another one, 132 for the download, 
almost 38 for the up, 31 for the download. The upload, this is when the network was more congested here. A lot more people were starting to work from home, as you can see, almost 8 o'clock in the morning. So they were using a lot more upload bandwidth. And this all goes back to what I was saying about what do you use this for? If you can't afford to have slow internet because you work from home, then you really want to watch these particularly upload speeds. All right, here's another one. Almost eight for the download. The upload, still really good, actually. Really good. For the download here, if you get something like this, you're not going to have a very good experience with viewing video content because you need at least, preferably, five plus, and that's at the minimum level. Upload here, still really good here. And then we have the pitfall here. Look at this here. This was taken when there were a lot of people in the area. And I just, I shook my head when I took this one. Here's another one here. Two for the download, 43 for the upload. These upload speeds honestly are pretty phenomenal. Look at this download speed. So as you can see, guys, at the end of the day, it's really just going to vary based on your area and how congested the T-Mobile Tower is. So now, you've watched the video and you're like, you know what, I think I've made my decision. For those of you who want to give it a try, there are a couple very important issues that I need you to be aware about. And I break all those down for you in this video here. It's very important that you guys know about these. So guys, I will see you over there.